Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we have been called by a client because they've got bloated goldfish and they've lost several over the last year and so they've got a few more presenting with a similar sign so we're going to check out what the problem is and to see how to fix it. Okay so here we've got a one of the goldfish that's presenting with these signs and you can see that the fish is really round and oval shaped uh, and some of the uh, differential diagnoses for what's causing the bloat, uh, I guess, would be fluid buildup in the in the uh, coelomic cavity, um, polycystic kidney disease, where the the kidney actually forms lots of little um, cysts. That's why it's called polycystic kidney disease because there are lots of them. Uh, then there's also mycobacteriosis, which is a bacterial infection, which is um, not treatable but it's zoonotic which means that humans can catch it uh, and also the, another one that's, that's quite common is amoeba uh, that causes granulomatous disease which is a chronic disease uh, of, of these um, all of them actually don't, don't kill the fish straight away so it takes a long time so uh, the owner describing fish dying over the last year a, a few rather than just sudden death uh, that tells me that it's not an acute septicemia, septicemia. Um, so, uh, but this fish though, you can see that um, not only is it round, but um, it's actually in a very advanced stage where the, the scales are actually starting to protrude. Um, this pine cone appearance, um, to me that, that's describing that it's pretty late in the stage where the organ, there's some organ failure in terms of its blood circulation, uh, the kidneys are not functioning properly, so um, I sadly in, in this case, uh, this would be a euthanasia uh, candidate. Uh, but I guess when, once we've euthanized him, uh, we can actually open him up the side and see what's actually wrong and, and see what we can do to, to help the others in the population. So just taking some blood from the goldfish uh, so that we can analyze the health status to see what effect this is having on the organ systems. So with the blood, you can test for liver function, kidney function, uh, and everything else that goes just like a normal blood test you'd have for a human or a dog or a cat. <clears throat> so I'm just making a blood smear to go with the blood. Uh, that way you can actually get more information out of the blood. So these are for blood films and, and it's supposed to be one cell thick it's got a thick end and it's got a feathered edge and from there you're able to um, learn about whether there's inflammation going on or not and also how many red cells there are and white cells so for euthanasia we use uh, anesthetic overdose as a humane way of putting a fish down um, to make sure that the fish is dead because it's cold blooded, the heart will keep beating even though it looks like it's dead. Uh, we have to wait at least 30 minutes to make sure that the, from the last time the gill covers actually move. Um, and when they're passed on as well, what you'll notice is that the, they'll be defecating because uh, their gut will relax uh, the sphincter and the feces will come out. So that's some of the observations you can see. To really make sure that the fish has uh, passed on, uh, the blood will clot. So when you take a snip of the gill, a gill biopsy, um, there shouldn't be any more bleeding coming out of it. Okay, so it's been a while now, we're just going to double check that the fish has passed on. So what I'm going to do is we just do a quick pinch test uh, of the fin, there's no reaction there. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the gill biopsy, because um, once a fish has passed on, the blood will clot pretty quickly. So we take a gill biopsy, a fairly big one, and we put it in here, and we're just looking for evidence of blood oozing out of, of the gills. Um, you can see that the nothing is coming out, so that means that the blood has clotted and the fish has passed on. So I'm just going to make an incision starting from the front through to the back. We don't never cut the fish from the back forward because we don't want to bring any of the enteric pathogens or bacteria and contaminate the field. I'm going to keep it as aseptic as possible. You can see a lot of fluid coming out.
Let's see, there's a lot of fluid, some fat. So here you can tell that it's a male fish. Uh, this gonad here you can see it's white, so this is the testes. Uh, and also you can tell why it's male because the leading edge of the pectoral fin is thickened. And also in males during breeding season, they may produce these white um, pimples, which are called breeding tubercles. Now that we've got him open, before we do anything further, I'm just going to take a swab before the field gets contaminated um, of the fluid, basically just touching the organ surfaces. And we can put that into a bacterial transport media in case we want to grow see if we can grow bacteria out of it. In a nice clean healthy fish you should not isolate that there should be no growth um, back in the lab uh, but if it's a septicemic kind of disease then uh, then you might see some sort of bacterial pathogen. So I'm just going to open up the uh, body cavity a bit bigger so they can have a quick look good look at the internal anatomy. So don't be um, worried because um, this fish is fully euthanized. Uh, you may notice the heart may still be beating. Um, that's perfectly normal. And also the musculature may be twitching occasionally. Uh, that's also uh, quite normal. So here, what we've got here is the goldfish um, with the body wall removed so that you can see the internal anatomy. What you've got here is a heart on the right hand side. Um, you can see if we poke it, it sort of beats still. Um, and just to show you that it's, this fish is definitely not alive, I'm just going to take the heart out, put it on a table and just show you that he still beats. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so that's where the heart lies. Uh, there's a little um, separation here called a septum. Uh, here, I, I, I told you before, this is the testes, uh, this brown looking organ here. This is the liver. It's quite um, friable. It breaks apart quite easily. This white bit here is fat, uh, which is quite normal in, in captive reared fish um, yeah so there's a lot of intestine you can see all these green loops these are intestines it lives in an outdoor pond so it's been feeding on a lot of algae so that's quite normal uh, you can see the liver is quite diffusely distributed through the through the um, abdomen so we're just going to remove the gastrointestinal tract or everything that's inside the lumen coelom so you can see the inside better so this is the testes again we'll just trim that off and once we've trimmed this off what you notice uh, under this fat here is the swim bladder so you can see that goldfish have a front swim bladder called the anterior swim bladder and the posterior swim bladder and over here, what you can see, this little thing here, this is the pneumatic duct. I've uh, severed its attachment, but um, it attaches all the way down up here to the esophagus, uh, which we've uh, severed here. But um, through this fat, if we pull away the swim bladder, what we will find then is the kidney. And here you can see the kidney is massively um, expanded by multiple cystic uh, structures. And, and this inside these uh, structures, if we cut it open, you see it contains this amber colored fluid, pretty much similar to what urine would look like for fish. And that was what was accumulating as well in, in its abdominal cavity when we were opening them up. Uh, you could see a lot of amber colored fluid. So this is, uh, what we know as polycystic kidney disease um, 
and we can tell you a little bit more about that disease. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking samples of the different organs to put it into the formalin. Uh, once we've got that preserved, we can keep it uh, and be able to examine it later on uh, if, if we want to. We can do histology. <clears throat> uh, and then this is the kidney. So we'll take the kidney out. Ooh. It's like bursting fluid filled bubble wrap. Yeah, so <clears throat> this kidney definitely cannot function. It's um, where you've got tubules that's supposed to run out to produce urine. Uh, they're actually blind ending sacs. So whatever urine that it's being produced is actually being trapped inside these um, bubbles. Uh, and, and then this way the fish isn't able to control its fluid balance. Uh, and this is why this fish uh, in, this, in particular um, it's actually filling up with fluid and being unable to uh, urinate it out and it's collecting inside its abdominal cavity see all this fluid here and it's also collecting inside under the skin and this is the reason why all these scales are starting to protrude out uh, a common clinical sign um, known as dropsy so a lot of people talk about dropsy being septicemia but in this case it's not this is due to polycystic kidney disease So with, yeah, with polycystic cystic kidney disease, it is a terminal disease, it's irreversible, uh, there's only a one way through it. Um, it's possible that you could try and drain uh, the fluid from, this, the, from the large cysts, but these will quickly refill uh, and then leading the fish back to where it was before. So it's not, not something that you can treat. So for this fish, uh, euthanasia was the, uh, the, the right thing to do. Uh, what, what could cause the cystic kidney disease, possibly an uh, infection uh, that might have in, incited it initially, uh, but not much is known. Maybe it's a genetic cause, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll do some lab testing on the tissues there and see whether uh, there's some agent that's involved. So we got the blood and histology samples back from the lab. I've reviewed the blood and also examined the histology sections and I'm happy to say that there is no signs of infectious disease. So what we're left with are two other possibilities. One is pollution in the water and genetic causes. With regards to pollution, um, what we're recommending to the owner is to actually run activated charcoal through the water to remove any um, toxicants or change the water source from bore to tap water. For those who are interested, I will show you down the microscope what the histology slides look like, what the different organs, how they're responding to this disease. So under the microscope here, you can see a histological section of the kidney. You can see elements of normal renal tubules, but you can also see the huge cystic spaces, which is what we saw on necropsy. So here you can see again, a really big cystic space with thin epithelium and all this space so you can tell that this kidney really cannot function properly the other thing you may notice if we go closer to here and have a look we just focus there you can see the kidney tubules they don't some of them contain nothing and some of them have flocular proteinaceous material um, this is just definitely some sort of disease process happening. We were talking about um, this, the differentials that causes polycystic kidney disease is an amoeba, uh, but what you'd expect to see there is granulomas forming, so you've got um, macrophages coming in uh, to try and fight off these parasites, but uh, there's no evidence of that here at all. Uh, all you can see are just kidney tubules Some normal, but mainly all enlarged. Here, this slightly bluer looking tubules, uh, they are likely to be new uh, kidney tubules uh, forming because of the necessity, uh, because the kidney isn't functioning properly, so they're 
trying to create more tubules to be able to filter the blood adequately. The other thing you'll notice um, in this kidney is that in the interstitium, so the spaces between the tubules, you've got a lot of these granulocytes. Uh, what should normally be here is a mixture of hematopoietic tissue, uh, pretty much like their bone marrow. They should have lots of different types of cells ha happening, but over here, there's only a single cell type uh, that just shows that this fish has got some pathology um, happening. Okay, so that's the kidney. In case you're interested to see what other organs are there, here is a section of the brain that looks normal or within normal range to me. Here's a section of the gills. You can see the primary lamellae are these things that go from left to right, sort of horizontal across the screen. And the secondary lamellae are those that are sort of vertical, sort of coming, shooting off this cartilaginous primary filament. What you'll notice though, coming closer up, uh, the gills are actually not happy and healthy. You can see there's an increase in the number of cells that are between these secondary filaments and also there's a spongiotic change um, in the interlamella area so this is typical for water or fluid accumulation within the fish uh, causing branchial edema thank you for watching and we'll see you next time